morning ago. I was very happy about that. I was very happy about that. I was very happy about that. Uh, I have been associated with CSP working with uh, the project uh, it's about one and a half and two years now. I started my project uh, as a contributor in the US Tower of Science, where I have built two bots of the school lab. After that, I have been contributed to different projects like Prometheus, Grafana, Open Project 3. And uh, today, I have my colleague, Sumai uh, Lamba, who is a warden at the CSU Ambassador. Advocate at Couchbase. So, uh, as you all know today, uh, we are going to talk about that how can we leverage DRA, Kubernetes DRA, when um, enhancing the utilization of GPU while deploying our LLM model and generative AI model. So, today, we have the following structure. Uh, we will start by having a walkthrough of the general infrastructure landscape around Kubernetes. Then, we will take a deeper look at why do we actually need uh, to Utilize or use the application of GPUs while running um, Kubernetes. Following that, we will uh, look into like uh, how can we leverage uh, Kubernetes uh, using DRA. And we'll wind up with some examples how can we use DRA in Kubernetes. First of all, we will be looking into the image infrastructure landscape on Kubernetes. So uh, these days, I mean, um, all the different models, all the different players in the industry are having to develop their own models. And why do we always focus on increasing the efficiency of these models, fine tuning models? There is a lot of problems of how these models can be deployed into production in real time. Because that is a lot of problems for themselves. Azure, Facebook, these two pretty recent jobs, the initial days of the Adobe edition, like this job. Supporting the high-end models, uh, but there's a lot of traction coming these days. A uh, lot of um, companies are adopting Kubernetes as well as running into methods as well. So uh, I'll explain that with an example. So why did we do that? Why? They were facing very many problems regarding uh, the uh, GPU failure. Now these failures of in the same way, problem. These problems are really related to the problems of GPU, related to the problems of GPU, related to the problems of GPU, related to the problems of a large number of problems. Other than that, this is also that the problem of the GPU goes down, the entire pipeline was also going down. So if this is the entire pipeline, if one of the um, like part of the component goes down, so what they did, they employed a custom technique called the tag base that they can be run on hand and later they can be into the custom distributed system to identify and handle the customer in real time. So they were able to push the technique back to what was coming. After that, they tried to focus my goal too fast. So what happened is I can go fast and find it okay. So, 
try to uh, tell you that why forms like Azure and KSF are available high um, um, uh, models for free. And they are a single VM or a multiple VM software. But also many organizations are turning to Kubernetes for the other deployment. For the larger models, special purpose for those and parameter sets over 600 million parameters. Alone can require to handle thousands of uh, nodes of Kubernetes cluster. to handle all these things and ensure that they are being uh, utilized properly. So I would like to uh, understand colleague Shivai Lamba, uh, who will shed more light on what I actually do we need and what is the best scenario of utilization of GPUs when it comes to deployment on Kubernetes or other deployment clusters. Thank you, Shivai, and I work at Cloud Services for both relation to Azure. So first, as Priyanshu mentioned, we see a lot of adoption Interesting backgrounds of it because two types require a different environment to make the environment as as the complexity of the model is complicated. So, typically, if you have a small machine learning model in a general computer in a CPU, but because the model is complicated, it's more likely for complexity in the number of compute and intensive tasks that you need for the machine learning model that you have. For that, you need more precise hardware, such as GPUs, or even technical computing units, which are important for them to do in computers which are used. Vectors which represent the real world. When it comes to much more complex machine learning tasks, we need specialized software such as GPU and GPUs to be able to do the inference and the training of these particular tasks. Let's understand that how we can actually integrate GPU and GPU properly. We actually gave the example of Kubernetes and hopefully that we can run in large complex Kubernetes clusters. We will do the same that we deploy applications like software or other models such as GPU. But we will uh, two different types of components. One is the host level component. So we actually uh, take advantage of the GPU version itself. So, for example, companies like NVIDIA have written AMD to provide uh, the GPUs like the NVIDIA GPU 1000 that they can use for training and optimization of the GPUs. Uh, will require things such as the NVIDIA Xena toolkit and the NVIDIA GPU driver. So, these are uh, required for your full cluster to be able to actually interact with these specialized GPUs uh, with the dedicated on the Kubernetes cluster. And then you can actually run them inside of your Kubernetes environment. So, as you might know, that a Kubernetes cluster is just Kubernetes, uh, you know, the pod, and then this pod will be getting into the So, we'll be running these demos on these uh, Kubernetes nodes and running the resources for them. And that's why on the Kubernetes side, uh, we'll have two components like the Kubernetes device side and the feature discovery side, which will allow you to be able to do which particular nodes you may have with the Kubernetes cluster running, uh, which particular nodes. So when you have an application of a task that actually does require to be able to run a GPU, then the Kubernetes engine or the API server will be able to find those clusters or availability for a GPU or cluster, and then you can run those particular GPUs or GPUs that are for that have access to GPUs. So for to find and then be able to assign which GPUs have GPUs, you need the GPU discovery, feature discovery, and the device planning. And now, so let's understand that what can actually happen. So here is an example of Deployment that you'll find. Uh, so Kubernetes actually does have support for this for uh, managing NVIDIA GPUs. So this example that you see is just take an example of a GPU cluster from NVIDIA. So basically, as I mentioned, uh, being able to actually find which particular nodes have access to the cluster and then uh, taking care of with the use of the device plugin. So let the first node or the first be able to access a specialized GPU card. So this is an example of a deployment that we have in this case. That inside of a container, we have specifically mentioned that. We'll be using NVIDIA for the example, and what we expect over here is that we we'll basically have access to two different GPU clusters. When we mention NVIDIA runs as GPU, that means we have two uh, sets of GPU clusters that will be just two different GPUs that you can use that will be available for your Kubernetes cluster to access. But first, um, there are certain limitations when it comes to actually using GPUs within this part of the package, uh, and one of the biggest ones being that the actual inference process that's given can be added up and handled. Uh, whenever you integrate any machine learning model or any code that's actually in an MLM, uh, only that code will mention certain features that are essential in it. So that means that, like, let's say there are um, different, like, okay, if you plan for MLM architecture, or you have different uh, hidden uh, topics that you have to decide on your unit. And the way that this will happen is that um, when your GPU will put actually do the inference or do the LLM inference, uh, because of the sequential nature, what will happen is that at that point, 
So there is another signature challenge. And that challenge is that if you have a multi model approach, means you're not just running a single large language model, multiple uh, deep learning models that you're running, uh, that can also create a So normally what would happen is that, let's say that if you have a uh, architecture for a machine model, that means that you're running a combination of large language models, Yeah. 
to it, it's going to be helpful. Right, so I can write a lot of things, but we need to abstain to be doing things for ourselves. I think we have to be grateful within the process of doing that. But that's what we get. Now, I think we look at another approach, which is the previous approach, which is basically a combined service. And by the way, process that we need to run to make the process that we need to start with the GPU process. So this is essentially a more time between sharing of GPU resources by increasing the integrity of the kernel stack so that we could have multiple system processes both at the same time on the GPU. So this is where we can actually reduce the inner functionality of the NVIDIA GPU or the code processes by allowing for multiple processes at the same time. But there are certain limitations when it comes to be able to actually run these processes. So one of the biggest ones is that there is no generic provision of these multiple system GPUs that run based on the kernel stack. So for example, for one type of request you might have a need for eight weeks, but then request might actually require you to have access for five different system processes. So that kind of that nature is also not supported only when you are using in different type of slicing or different slicing techniques. And of course, you know, there's no support for more things than custom GPUs. So there is a set of requirement for you to have like let's say more uh specific on like let's say you need to Maybe you need like five different shops, or you need three different shops. So a bit more static in nature, you can actually request everything. So if there's a bit more dedicated uh, need for you to actually do the task slicing of this or that thing, then there are limitations. But that's why we will now talk about a similar resource application which is able to actually um, overcome all these limitations that we have covered uh, right now in this video slide, which will, which will be taken care of by Redanjan. Over to you. And Over here, what 
comes in you can change the MIG configuration or do you have to put a note ready with MIG before you know using the uh, system resource allocation? Uh, so, uh, the profile which we are talking about that uh, these profiles you can define. So uh, in fact, we go back to the previous slide, I'll show you. So uh, with this report play, uh, we can quickly uh, tell that when the